This is the area of Hartford, Connecticut, along the south edge of Constitution Plaza. Before that was built, this was part of the city's old east side neighborhood, which included Front Street. In this video, I'm going to talk about the buildings that used to be here before 1960 on the north side of State Street, between Market Street and Front Street, which is now Columbus Boulevard. In the early 19th century, this stretch of State Street was part of the business center of the city. As time went by, it also became home to generations of immigrants. In particular, this block had connections with the Jewish and Chinese American communities. Businesses prospered here for decades before everything was torn down in the late 1950s to make way for the massive redevelopment project of Constitution Plaza. This is a picture by Joseph Ropes of the Great Hartford Flood of 1854. He would later develop a series of panoramic views of Hartford during the flood for the firearms manufacturer Sam Colt. In this picture, the view is east from the old State House down State Street towards the Connecticut River. In the foreground is the intersection of State Street with American Row on the right which was then dominated by the American Hotel. To the north is Market Street. On the corner of Market and State is the Farmers and Mechanics Bank, which was chartered in 1833. This is now the southwest corner of Constitution Plaza. Here's a photograph of Hartford's old east side taken from Traveler's Tower during a later flood, the big one, in 1936. The water is very high at the Bulkley Bridge. The streets of the east side are all flooded here, including State Street. In my last video, I talked about the buildings that used to stand on the south side of State Street, where the Phoenix Mutuals Boat Building is today. I'll put a link to it in the description below. In this video, let's focus on the buildings that used to stand on the Constitution Plaza side of State Street. Zooming in, in the lower left-hand corner, part of the Farmers and Mechanics Bank building is visible. Here it is in a different view of the area. The bank was acquired by the Hartford National Bank in 1910 and the building was then converted to commercial store uses. Just east of that was a 19th century building at 110 to 112 State Street that was remodeled and expanded with a new fourth floor in 1928. The next building, at 116 State Street, was also built in the 19th century and became the home of Harry's Clothing Store, founded in 1925 by Harry B. Lassman, a Jewish immigrant from Ukraine. The picture in the middle shows the building earlier in the store's history. The picture on the right shows it at the time it was about to move out when these buildings were being demolished. By then it had become a much grander storefront. The store next moved to Main Street across from City Hall, in a building that burned down in 1959. Here's another picture of Harry's when it was still on State Street. Just east of Harry's was a parking lot where several 19th century buildings shown in the inset image had stood that were torn down in 1931. They were erected back in the 1830s. In the center building, Edson Fessenden once ran the Eagle Temperance Inn. Later he was a founder of the Connecticut Mutual Life Insurance Company and then of the American Temperance Life Insurance Company, which eventually became Phoenix Mutual Life and had its very first headquarters in this building. At that time, State Street was the heart of the city's business district, in later years, the insurance companies would move to streets further west, and the building was then used as a boarding house. 
In the early decades of the 20th century, these buildings and others in the vicinity were also used by the city's Chinese community. In this ad from the 1898 Gears Hartford City Directory, Yuen Singh and Company was located at 118 State Street. They were leading importers of teas, silks, crockery, and fireworks, the latter being very popular on the 4th of July. In 1922, a series of advertisements appeared in the Hartford Current announcing that the Ackerman Clothing Store at 122 to 124 State Street was having a going-out-of-business sale described as the greatest sale ever held in Hartford. Ackerman is described as State Street's oldest merchant, offering the best in clothing and gents' furnishings for 30-odd years. An ad a few days later describes items for sale at almost any old price. The store is described as being directly across from the car barns. These were the trolley barns of the Hartford Street Railway Company, located on the south side of State Street. In August of 1929, the Hartford Current reported that Chinese from all over Connecticut and southern Massachusetts had sought refuge at 124 State Street. At that time, it was the state headquarters of the An Liang Tong. A new Tong War had broken out in major cities, including New York, Chicago, and Boston, and hundreds sought refuge in the building which was protected by extra policemen assigned to guard it until a truce was signed. Just two years later, these buildings were demolished after city building inspectors declared them structurally unsafe. A few doors down, another early 19th century building had also been the early home of a big Hartford insurance company. Aetna Fire Insurance erected the structure at 134 State Street and had its offices here from 1835 until 1867 when it moved to Main Street. Years later, in July of 1913, workmen renovating the lower level of the building uncovered the old Etna sign, which had been covered over for decades. A businessman who was familiar with the old sign from back in the 1860s rushed to the Hartford Club to tell former Governor Morgan G. Bulkley, president of Aetna Life Insurance, about the discovery. Bulkley had a particular interest in this building. In 1847, when he was nine years old, his family moved to Hartford from East Haddam. They arrived by steamship at the foot of State Street and lived for three years in rented rooms above the Aetna offices here before Bulkley's father, the lawyer, a lifelet Bulkley, purchased a house on Church Street in 1850. As I mentioned in my video on Washington Street, Morgan G. Bulkley later had a grand home there. He also had a school and a bridge named for him and was the first president of baseball's National League. The building at 142 State Street was fairly recent when this photo was taken, having been built in 1932. Next to that was a very historic spot in the city's business and social life. This was once the site of Morgan's Exchange Coffee House, operated from 1817 to 1829 by Joseph Morgan, the grandfather of the famous Gilded Age financier J.P. Morgan. Morgan's Coffee House became the place for businessmen to meet to make deals, as well as have dances and social activities. It was here, in fact, that Joseph Morgan and his partners first organized the Aetna Fire Insurance Company in 1819. Morgan sold the business to Sela Treat in 1829. Morgan would later own the City Hotel on Main Street. In later years, the former Morgan's Coffee House became the Exchange Hotel. This historic building was destroyed in a fire in 1859 and replaced by a brownstone structure with an address of 146 to 152 State Street. From 1904 on, it was the home of L.B. Haas & Company, 
Growers and Packers of Connecticut Leaf Tobacco. The company had been in business on this block for years before that, though, almost its entire existence, since it was founded in 1853 by a young Jewish immigrant from the Netherlands named Louis B. Haas, who was also an early leader of Beth Israel Synagogue. In 1886, Charles Coburn, a lime and cement merchant, moved into the building next door at 154 State Street. The building was later used as a hotel. When the picture on the right was taken, buildings along State Street were being demolished in the 50s. But there were still structures on either side of L.B. Hassan Company and its neighbor to the east. Those buildings were already gone when the next photograph was taken, and eventually these two buildings as well would be demolished to make way for Constitution Plaza. The property next door, at 164 to 168 State Street, was long the home of Olds, Whipple & Company. Started here in 1877, the company sold fertilizer, seeds, and agricultural equipment. They had an extensive business, also opening a store for household goods in the Waverly Building on Main Street. In 1896, they replaced their old building on State Street with a grand six-story building designed by the architectural firm of Hapgood and Hapgood. Later, they purchased a large tract of land along Commerce Street for a fertilizer plant. When they outgrew this some years later, they built a new plant in East Hartford. The next building, at 174 to 176 State Street, had an interesting history. This picture from the 1890s shows that it was very old and had a gambrel roof. The building had shops on the first floor. It was typical at the time for the owners to live with their families on the second floor above their stores. At the time of this photo, the section on the right, or east, was home to a clothing store owned by Ephraim, a.k.a. Frank Finkelstein, with a sign declaring, Cheap John is the king of low prices. Finkelstein, a German immigrant, born in Galicia in 1865, arrived in Hartford in 1898. His store at 176, later numbered 178 State Street, would become a mainstay in the area for decades to come. He was also a leader in the Jewish community, being involved in the founding of Hartford Talmud Torah, a Jewish school and community center on Pleasant Street that was a predecessor of the Hartford Yeshiva. The section on the left had also long been a clothing store. From 1855 to 1881, it was home to the store of Henry Ensign, who trained as a tailor before opening his own store here at 174 State Street. In 1881, he moved his business into one of the storefronts in the new Hartford Current Building on State Street opposite the old State House. He retired in 1899. The building suffered two big fires at the end of the 19th century. In October of 1898, a fire gutted the building, which the Current described at the time as being an old rookery. At the time, it was owned by Jerry O'Callaghan and occupied by Henry Lewis, a tailor, and also by the barber shop of S. Katzman and the clothing store of Abram Greenberg. About two months before the fire, a manufacturer of cigars had moved out after 25 years in the building. The building was described as being gutted, but seems to have been quickly repaired as it was again occupied when another fire broke out in November of 1900. By this time, Finkelstein ran the store on the right side of the building, and there was another clothing store in the left section owned by the tailor Samuel Ackerman. I'm not sure if he is related to the Ackerman clothing store I mentioned earlier at 124 to 26 State Street that closed in 1922. As the Hartford Current described it on November 2, 1900, the alarm was sent at 2 a.m. When firemen arrived, they helped Finkelstein, 
his wife, and four young children escape. Quote, After these little children were cared for, the police went to Ackerman's rooms, which were burning rapidly. The officers hammered on the doors and windows, but did not get any response. It was supposed that the family had perished, but Ackerman had escaped with his wife and two children out the back way. His bedroom was filled with smoke when he awoke, and he could see nothing. There were no flames in the room when he woke up. He took his wife, and she grabbed two of the small children. He groped about for his three-years-old daughter, but could not find her. Ackerman jumped out the back window, and his wife threw the two children to him. Mrs. Ackerman cut her legs badly when she jumped from the window. Ackerman had a feeling that his wife must have the younger girl, and when he found that she did not, he tried to get back into the room to rescue it. But then the room was full of fire, and he could do nothing. The family went to an adjoining house in the rear, facing on Front Street, and Mrs. Ackerman became hysterical. She screamed and made a terrible outcry for her baby. The firemen who were working in the rear heard her piercing screams and made every effort to get into the room where the child was supposed to be. A short ladder was found in the yard, and this was placed against the wall and braced with a big wooden box. Officer Allen climbed in the window and was quickly followed by a fireman. They did not see any signs of the child. Unquote. Eventually the fire was brought under control, but sadly the child's body was found at 2.50 a.m. Quote, a hole was cut through a partition in the center of the building on the second floor, as this was the only way the men could reach the room where the child was. Foreman Krug brought the child down in his arms, and Sergeant Butler had the police wagon brought. The little girl was carried a short distance up the street and placed on a doorstep until the wagon arrived. Unquote. The building's basic framework survived the fire. This section on the left, from another view of State Street from above, shows the left side of the building seemingly gone, but Finkelstein's store had continued next door with a now much grander storefront. The building would go through a major transformation in 1924, as this photo from the Hartford Current of October 13, 1924 reveals, a new building was being erected for F. Finkelstein at 176 State Street. As part of the caption reads, quote, A unique feature of the construction was that, owing to the necessity of continuing business in the former store, building operations were carried on without interruption of business, the new building was built around the old structure, unquote. Finkelstein died in 1934, and the business was continued by his sons. Going back to that 1890s view of the building, when the first of the two fires had struck the building in October of 1898, Wah Hop's restaurant was located in the building next door. The restaurant had a sign made of peacock feathers and paper flowers that was considerably scorched by the flames. The restaurant, which had opened a little over seven months earlier under a different owner, was Hartford's first Chinese restaurant. Located at 182 State Street, it served both Chinese and American meals and listed chow chop suey as a specialty. When the restaurant was about to open, on February 3, 1898, the Hartford Current described it as, quote, another evidence that Hartford has become a metropolis, unquote. The Hartford Current reported on September 30, 1898, quote, Doyan Lo, proprietor of the Chinese restaurant on State Street, has sold it to Wahop of this city and Tung Ham of New Britain. They will take possession as soon as the cook arrives. In Chinese restaurants, the cook is of more importance than the proprietor, for when the cook leaves, the doors close. Doyan Lo lost his cook and gave up as he was unable to get another. Then he sold out, and the new proprietors obtained a cook in New York who, it is said, has worked in the swell Chinese clubs in San Francisco. 
Wahop is to name the restaurant after himself, and it will be called the Wahop Cafe, unquote. The next building east at 188 to 194 State Street was long the home of the hardware dealers L.S. Nook and Company. The story of this family business begins with Joseph L. Nook, a Jewish immigrant from Amsterdam who came to America in 1850. He started business as a tailor and second-hand clothes dealer. Business prospered, and in 1866 he purchased the Bonji Building, which I mentioned in my last video, on the south side of State Street. And in 1873 he purchased the building at 188 State Street. Before his death in 1893, Joseph was joined in the business by his son, Leviat Samuel Nook, who was moving into the jewelry and brokering lines. L.S. Nook was instrumental in founding the Pawn Brokers State Association, of which he was president for four years. He got to know the hardware business quite well, and by 1900 came to focus on it exclusively. He had the building at 188 to 194 State Street remodeled in 1914. It had the largest floor space of any hardware store in the city. Let's move down to the intersection of State Street and Front Street. One day in April of 1906, a little girl stood right in the middle of this intersection with a group of other children. This view, taken by William H. Thompson, looks west up State Street towards the old State House, which back then was hidden behind the large post office building that was demolished in the 1930s. On the right are some of the buildings I've been talking about. There's the L.B. Haas Building, the Olds and Whipple Building with its distinctive signage, the site of Finkelstein store, the building that had Hartford's first Chinese restaurant, and the Nook hardware store before it underwent its big expansion in 1914. Let's move on to the building at the corner of State and Front Street. Back in 1881, this was the home of Isaac Hills and Sons, dealers in boots and shoes. This corner would become part of one of the first sections of Constitution Plaza to be built, Broadcast House, completed in 1961. It was long the home of WFSB-TV, Channel 3, but the channel later moved to Rocky Hill and Broadcast House, like so many of its predecessors on State Street, was demolished in 2009. What was left was a vacant lot that has yet to be redeveloped over a decade later. So here's some before and after. Here's the scene back during the flood of 1936. And here's the view after the completion of Constitution Plaza. Here's the picture I just showed looking west up State Street back in 1906. And here's a view of the area today. There can be so much history in just a single block, and I'm sure even more can be discovered. As the old line goes, there are 8 million stories in Old Hartford. These were just a few of them. Well, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It would really help to grow the channel, and I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. So please consider it. Thanks.